Um, great. And uh, just to get on the same page about time, uh, do you have any time constraints, Shenzhen? We're thinking no. in an hour and two hours. Sounds good. Okay. All right. So, yeah, good to see you both, Shenzhen and Steven. Um, really wanted to introduce you as I've had such amazing conversations with you both recently about um, really cool things that we might be able to do with the future of AI and the future is already here in some ways. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So maybe first, um, Stephen, you could just introduce yourself a little bit. I don't know if you have met before. Yeah, ne never, never face to face, uh, but, but we have kind of been in the same digital space before Shenzhen while you were um, doing a, a delay ordination ceremony at Maple uh, a couple times. I was the tech guy, so I was kind of behind the scenes. Oh my god! Um, yeah, helping you get that. Well, <laughs> uh, like like they say to like the Vietnam vets, thank you for your service. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> great, absolute pleasure. And <clears throat> I, I don't know what what more to say. I mean, I've uh, I grew up homeschooled as a geek in Austin, Texas, and um, have just been on the, the meditation track for the last few years or so, um, and thought I was going to ordain, uh, ended up not going that route, um, spent some time at Maple, and I'm, I, I'd say on the, the pendulum between like monastic and lay person, I'm, I'm swinging much more toward the lay person this year, and uh, traveling and, and leading relational meditation uh, circling practice uh, while certifying as a facilitator and then exploring this this wavefront, this edge of, of AI. Um, but I've, I've dabbled in many, many things and traveled a lot in, in the world over the last several years. And I'm in some ways more peaceful, in other ways even more confused than when I began and uh, generally just more okay with all of it. So. Well, we can talk about the confused uh, that it's sounds here. like something I'd like to uh, be of service if I can. Yeah. Um, no, seriously, mm. um, how um, how far have you gone down the technological rabbit hole of actually? Um, <clears throat> Of programming with the uh, there's some debate as to what to call it. Shall we say the new conversational machine learning capabilities with the big computes? Mm. <laughs> all <laughs> yeah, the buzzwords. Uh, yeah, all the buzzwords. You, you know um, what they are. Not not terribly far. I mean the. Uh... I, I've sort of dabbled in um, in Google Colab notebooks for a few years. Um, I I like um, if you know what GPT two is, um, the the text text model that that came out from OpenAI. Um, I fine tuned it on the entirety of um, Access to Insight and um, played around with like generating some. some well, I that, uh, that sounds like a very serious involvement. <laughs> That's like right up what I'm thinking, except we all know that there's a, another version out there called GPT-3, oh, yeah. and we all yeah. know that there are a gazillion knockoffs all mm -hmm. over the world, Yeah, and we bloom. all know yeah. that GPT-4 is right around the corner, and mm -hmm. they're probably hoping to impress us, which is going to be difficult given how many players there are in this international game. Oh, <clears throat> but if you already did a project with version two, that is very much along the lines of my Raymond project, I think, I don't know if I've used that phrase Raymond with you, but that's my term for a certain vision that I have. Oh. It's, it's well, I, the maybe history. Before we, before we dive a little bit deeper into that, I want to say like that, that, was, that was just like a little bit of a dabbling for me. And I, I would say my, my experience in, in the text models is not as extensive as 
my experience with these more recent um, text to image models. So DALI and Stable Diffusion, um, two, two that have recently come out this year, um, I've been spending a lot more time with. Okay, so you, you to just, them. yeah. Yeah, you so just that's, answered that's much more my, my area. My, yeah. You answered my question. You, mm -hmm. you have the tech chops to work on a project like Raymond, which mm -hmm. is along the lines of what you're doing. But yeah, so I'd love for us to hear more about Raymond. I want I want you to be able to share about Raymond, mm -hmm. and I want Stephen to be able to share about what he's doing with the AI art. And I think that perhaps you guys can really inspire each other or find an opportunity for collaboration, even though they're different. Uh, so what should we start with? Um, well, I'd love to to offer just a few minutes, uh, Shinzen, to, to show you just some very basics of, of what I've been doing with these with the AI image tools. And um, if you're down for it, we can do this at the beginning or really at any time. Go ahead. To well, actually so um, to, to actually make an image with you, like in real time, um, using yeah, these, I get these, it. I, I, I uh, yeah, good mm -hmm. uh, good place to start. Let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. And uh, yeah, we'll just do the whole, the whole desktop here. Uh, all right, so can you all see this image? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, okay, now let me, let me reverse engineer it. Yeah, what, can you what, guess what the prompt on this one? <laughs> what's the, uh, the caption, right? Right, yeah, what was, what was the prompt here, Shinzo? Well, let's see how close okay. <laughs> It's got a rainbow and it's got these colors down in the corner. And those colors are the colors of the international Buddhist flag. When Buddhism needed uh, something international uh, as its symbol, because our Buddhism always had the swastika as its symbol. Right. Uh, and that sort of got spoiled because of national socialism, Nazi, Hitler. I mean, in Asia, it's still looked upon as Mangala, meaning pro, pro, auspicious. Blessing. But, yeah. but uh, Henry Alcott, a Westerner, designed the international Buddhist flag. So maybe that's what we see here. He seems to be on a sphere or a torus, there's something pagoda-like behind, but there's all this fireworks and rainbow stuff. And it's pretty close. Even, I, I, I wanna, I wanna, um, <laughs> I wanna free, free you from from the suspense and, and share the, the prompt for this one. Um, well, you, you didn't give me a chance to nail it. <laughs> no, no, that was just so, my thing. But the eyes but you're are right. weird. The yeah, eyes, the eyes are, are a little weird. The the hands, if you look closely at the hand, it's like it's kind of it's missing a finger or it's somewhere well, it's else. A card, or, you know, it, it <laughs> yeah. might be a Mickey Mouse hand with right. It could be three a four-fingered fingers. hand. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. But, I, I just got all <laughs> analytic on you. <laughs> it's great. Um, well, I, I particularly love your interpretation of the the watermark that's in the in the bottom right. That is actually the the OpenAI watermark for Dolly images. So it's it's added to every single generation that that comes out of their website as a way of of signifying that it is is an AI generated uh, image. Um, and it and it it's those colors because those tend to appear in contrast to every single pattern that, that's available and they're a recognizable logo. Um, but the, uh, the prompt for this one was, was Maitreya Buddha arriving on earth greeted by thousands of cheering people with rainbows and fireworks in the sky. And it was one of the first images Why? that I created. <clears throat> oh. Oh, so first of all, he's much more muscular <laughs> than my Treya. He's chunky. So where did it get that? 
and, and you know, know, Asian Buddhas can be heavy, mm -hmm. although not inevitably. But well, he's let me, muscular. He, he's muscular, and I, I'll show you now kind of a range of of the images that have come out, and these and these are samples of literally thousands that I've I've prompted over the last few months. Um, and I say prompted because, you know, the creation process is, is never quite deterministic. You know, I can describe an image to some extent, but what the AI creates is, is often quite different from what I would expect. Um, so here, for instance, is, is the Buddha um, meditating under a tree in the style of Van Gogh's Starry Night. Um, and it was one of the first generations that a friend of mine actually looked at and said, I want a printout of that. Can you send me that? I, now, I want to put it on my wall. This just um, really gets me thinking here. Mm. <clears throat> because that tree is very much in a Chinese style of painting, I would say. I think and, specifically this was willow tree, by the way, for this one. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing Chinese in this one? Well, yeah. It's funny. Uh, it look like Starry Night to me. It's, well, it's but it's kind of got another, that It's a vibe. different. It's a different starry. You could. It's a starry night, but the stars become the tree, mm -hmm. and it's so well done. The tree and the foliage of it that it's compelling to purchase. Hmm. Uh, here's another. So this is a, the Buddha um, Renaissance painting by Caravaggio. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so we can Caravaggio. see how Caravaggio might have imagined, uh, yeah. imagined the Buddha. Um, and getting a bit more diverse here. So this, this was- uh, Seriously? K-pop. Yeah, that's from K -pop AI. Bodhisattva. Yes, this is K pop Bodhisattva, um, hands in mudra, sitting on an ornate throne, surrounded by a landscape of psychedelic temples and trees. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Steven, at some point, I want you to say why you're making bodhisattva images. So, so yeah, it's a, it's a good question, Thea. Um, I realized pretty early on with, with these tools that because of how easy it is to create images, that the temptation would be there to just imagine anything and just kind of go on a, a wandering spree of, of dreaming. And so as a way of, of exploring these systematically and, and keeping it, um, keeping some kind of a through line, I chose to include Buddha or Bodhisattva in all of the, the prompts or most of the prompts that, that I make with them. So we can sort of, we can see the many different interpretations of those concepts when combined with many different styles or words or, or um, descriptors or textures or whatever. Um, and so that's, that's been my, my kind of meditation or my mindfulness throughout this is to come back to generating images with those included. Um, for instance, steampunk bodhisattva. This is how it would render that. Which I, I, here's another are one. You, like, are wow. you, uh, Steve, also a professional artist? Or no. is this, this is all the AI? This, <laughs> this is this, all the AI. This is that literally. Is fucking yeah. scary, man. Yeah. Uh, punk rock bodhisattva, or punk rock Buddha, I think, was, was this one. Uh, <laughs> This is in the style of Alex Gray. If, I don't know if you've ever seen Alex Gray's artwork, but um, you know, very psychedelia. Oh, oh, oh like the guy with the body. Anatomy. A body with, yeah. The body electric guy? That yeah. guy, that guy. Yeah, so, oh yeah. So Dali has studied all of these, these works of art, including some living artists and, and can render things in that style. Um, she can also do uh, photorealistic or, or photos basically. So this is, this is a statue that does not exist. So this was um, the Buddha, yeah, contented, smiling uh, bodhisattva, uh, Greek statue, uh, 35 millimeter photo in a museum. Yeah. Um, 
I on Tosh and you know Tosh and right you've you've heard of of them. Um, no. No. Okay. What is well, it? Well, regards another friend from Maple um, has been reading through the Avatamsaka Sutra, and so at one point I just put in a bunch of names from the um, from the Avatamsaka Sutra. Uh, oh, yeah. For instance, this was um, everywhere manifesting boundless courage, Bodhisattva. Um, wow. <laughs> and um, this this was uh, I think just. Um, Tree, yeah, arm, arm of courage and strength, bodhisattva, um, and you can see just, just there's a, a wild amount of interpretation that the AI is adding to these, um, including some of the elements. Like usually, there's some sort of a, a jewel or, or third eye ornament. There's some kind of mudra happening, but then there's all this other creative expression that gets added in as well. Um, this was a, a bodhisattva merged with a tree. Um, and I had to, I mean, it, it just, each one of these, you know, I see them sort of come out of the, of the chaos of the, of the ether. And it just, it's just stunning sometimes what the, what she adds in. Uh, Are these aside, all, um, mm -hmm. form, do these, do these all form from, uh, diffusion? Yes. So, so, so you, how familiar you, are you with, with um, you know, years ago, I had friends in the, that field, uh, and um, I w tried to convince them that there's uh, special effects would be more realistic if they did anti-diffusion. I, I was trying to actually show that kind of math. To, mm. But anyway, that's a personal anecdote. That's, it's just, I feel vindicated that. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's all of these are diffusion models. Um, they're, they're what's called clip guided diffusion, where you can you can see the two directions it goes here. Um, diffusion is the process of, of, of adding noise progressively to a clear image. And then anti-diffusion is, is the process of um, using a, 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 an image labeling AI in combination with the generator. So the generator is trying to make something that is labeled like the prompt you give it. And they're going back and forth, the, the generator um, changing the, the values of the pixels progressively from the noise to get a little bit closer to the, Does, the, uh, the desired thing until it, 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 it matches. It looks um, like um, flat out linear A to B and then be back, but does it actually wiggle? Uh, yes. Sometimes more diffuse, sometimes more. Uh, let me show you an example of, of the process. So this is an animation created with um, stable diffusion, which is not DALI. So this is a different image generator, image synthesis model from what I've just been showing you, um, but is open source. And so people are able to make many different tools with it. And so this is this is each frame. It's trying to match um, a set of prompts I gave it, which are names of, um, from the Avatamsaka Sutra. And you can sort of see it. <laughs> uh, well, why is it giving the uh, all? Are these separate? Why was it giving different views of the same one for a while? Yeah, what's going add at different uh, magnifications. Yeah, um, Why? there's a slight uh, camera movement with each frame that's programmed into the into the animator, and then each time it's getting a little bit of randomness, but it's also getting the information from the previous frame. So it's it's trying to are take these what... actually the discrete progression that it went through? It jumps in a way, like this. In a way, yes. Um, this isn't for a single image. This is just a, a continual well, animation. Now what I find interesting, mm -hmm. what I find Im immediately intriguing, oh my God, it's changing scale and direction. Wait, Stephen, is this, and, this is a tool that someone else made? Yeah, so this is, for instance, now that this, the, the AI model is open source, people are, are combining that with other um, 
programming tools and other um, image generation systems and kind of putting putting this synthesis into a pipeline with other things. So the in this particular case, it's it's generating like a thousand frames or wh whatever this was based on um, a set of prompts I gave it. And so it, it each, you know, maybe like five seconds in, the prompt actually changes. Um, did, I'm just wondering, did the pipeline do the, okay, I'm gonna take the last output and zoom in and then feed it back in? Yes, but but the the AI is is getting the previous frame, and then it's it, as instead of complete noise, it's not having to go from complete noise every time. It's going from like a little bit of noise and a slightly shifted perspective, and it's it's having to basically keep the the concept in mind and re manifest the the image out of that is that noise fascinating. Time. See yeah. what. What immediately occurs to me is you're do this is doing a scale and rotation um, <clears throat> motion. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's other things that I'm not seeing. I, I'm seeing a a discrete sequence of views and level. Yeah. Uh, there may be many, many other things here in between or really, I don't it's, know. It's just the, it's the same process with every frame that, that I showed you at the beginning. So there's a little bit of, of noise that's then um, anti-diffuse until uh, until the the resulting image meets the the prompt well enough, and then the next frame is created. And so this is this is just a repetition of that process. That and then with all those frames, those are combined and made into an animation. But I think what what this demonstrates to to kind of zoom out is there's a real intelligence at work here, where these these tools are are making sense in in a real way of chaos based on the the input of humans and based on the understanding that they've developed by looking at millions or billions of images and distilling that into a neural net that can understand art styles and composition and concepts and arrange them in a more or less coherent way. Um, so I think that that's maybe sufficient preamble. I, I was going to, to show a, a few more images here just to, to give some examples of um, I'm just, I'm just curious, Shinzen, mm -hmm. if you had more on that or what you were getting at there. Well, I don't know enough about what's under the hood to oh, go back to uh, well, it doesn't matter. Um, Which one? It, no, it's okay. I don't know enough about what's under the hood to quite understand, but I found the sequence of views and detail to be interesting. And I don't know if that's intrinsic to the process or that's just something the cartoon put in there to make it sort of fractal and engaging that that is seems intrinsic like the to the process it, it is oh. it is it is intrinsic to the process and it's not that it's it's adding it in order to make it more engaging there the um what you're seeing is the 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 struggle basically of this to um, to maintain coherence. I think this is this is another good example. So oh, oh my yeah. God, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Because what this is, my God, I wonder if we can use Uh, 
modular form theory hmm. here. This is uh, this is just a wild. See, these look to me. Wow, it's so different when you actually look at its process. Yeah. You start to get an insight what it's going through. Yeah. See, if this were, I'm not sure I'm spotting all the underlying geometry in the math, but it looks to me like it's shifting angle and um, scale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like we're looking from this side at this scale and now, but does it always scale down? Is it, or does it so, ever so the, scale up the to- scaling, The scaling movements are, are programmed by the, um, by the the i mean when i say collab notebook you know what i'm talking about there right it's the it's it's code i that don't other... but i'm okay. guessing i'm guessing collab is similar yeah. to the gpt3 codex it's uh no it's... no uh so collab is um collab is a platform so google google has a bunch of extra compute available because they have you know massive data centers and they created a tool where you can you can basically host code in a in a like in a web page and then um, and then run run that code. Anyone can can like copy this almost like a Google Doc and run that code on Google's servers. And so what people have done so it's, is, it is, doesn't generate code. It, uh, no, which no. would be a codex that, right. that I was confusing like, it with. Copilot. Yeah. So, without oh, going into detail, oh, there's a copilot. There's something called that. Yeah. Do you know about this? Okay. So now I've heard has, the phrase. Now yeah. I understand. It was confusing yeah. to me. Well, I figured the copilot was someone's version of Kodak, but I don't know whose or I. But yeah, I have heard G, the phrase. So GPT or, or GitHub copilot is. I think they're the same thing. It's like the commercial version of of Kodak, which was. Oh. GPT-3 trained on a ton of, of programming code and yeah. then implemented in a way such that you can you can write code and then it auto completes it for you. Um, that's different. So Colab is so the, a way for people the to, guy that to does share code, programs. The guy mm -hmm. that does Codex at um, GPT-3 is a friend of ours. Oh, no kidding. Wow. Yeah, Wojciech. He does the language models and the codex. Mm -hmm. And he's definitely a friend of ours. Awesome. By that, I mean a mindfulness, someone that appreciates mindfulness and is mm -hmm. looking to benefit the world with this tech. Yeah. Oh, I'm I... sorry, I interrupted you. So now at Colab, I... Uh, I understand. Um, you were answering yeah. about the zooming motion saying, I think you're saying, Stephen, that that is not, that part is not intrinsic to the, the art model. That is it, an artifact it is not. of the so, programs so, um, made with it. Right. Um, so, so th and this is, unfortunately, it's, it's getting a little bit complicated here, but um, the, so there, there are separate, separate processes that kind of got combined into that animation. The generation of each image in that sequence is done by stable diffusion, which is, which is the name of the, the AI image synthesizer. So that's, that's completely done from that synthesizer. Right, that's an orthogonal module. Right. To... Um, each, the, so then there's a, there's a slight transformation to the output image that's done by the Google Colab notebook that, that creates the animation. And that is programmable. So I can go in and I can say with each, with each frame, afterward, I want you to transform it by like 
zooming in a little bit or rotating it a little bit or, or shifting to the, to the left or right or up or down by some percentage. And then after that transformation, that resulting transformed image is fed back into stable diffusion, which then uses that transform, slightly transformed image plus a little bit of noise, a little bit of, of randomness, and then have to regenerate another frame that fits the, the prompt that, that I've given it. So you are you have through the Google Colab notebook um the power to parameterize <clears throat> um, each presentation geometrically through the full uh, Euclidean group and probably through any geometric group, Poincare group or anything. Uh, mm -hmm. Because it was looking to me, it's, I'm saying, why is this doing conformal mapping? Because mm. that's, that's what you call it when you're scaling and changing the angle. Mm -hmm. uh, except conformal mapping preserves uh, the local angle um, and um, the, it, it preserves the magnitude and direction of angle mm. in, in the small. But in, from the global perspective, the whole goddamn thing changes. Yeah. I, so, I want to show you another, like, simpler example of this. So, um, I, let me just interrupt yeah. you, though, because I oh, do sure, have sure. a specific question. I, yeah, I do, go ahead. I'm following your description. It's beautiful. It's crystal clear how you're laying this out. Mm -hmm. um, my question was, you could have zoomed out as well as zoomed in. There's yeah. nothing that requires. And so it's like the full Poincaré group. I'm just thinking geometrically. You've got, yeah, a parameter, a parameter space, mm -hmm. and that's an independent dimension. So you have the anti-diffusion, um, the stable diffusion module, mm -hmm. and you've got this sort of. Uh, geometric control of view module that you get from Colab. Mm -hmm. And who provides the stable diffusion? GP, uh, uh, Dali 2? No, so, so this is where it gets really interesting. And we're, we're gonna have to, to give a little <laughs> bit of context here. Um, so earlier this year, OpenAI, which is, which is, it was started by Elon Musk, but he's not related to it anymore. Yeah, because, well, see, because you know, I know Wojciech, I'm, yeah, you, you know the history of them. I, so, I know so their background. Yeah. They, they released um, the, the paper and then they released a, a very closed private beta of DALI 2 um, as a web interface. And some people were like gradually invited in to use that. This web interface was, was censored. So you, you couldn't generate like images of celebrities, um, violence, nudity, those sorts of things. It would, it would just, it would give you a warning or ban you. Um, and then that was gradually expanded to something like 10,000 people by the end of June. And then at the end, at the beginning of, of July. That's 10,000 users, not 10,000 people banned, users. right? Yeah. <laughs> no, but um, the, the user, I don't think too many people had to be banned. But so uh, over that time, that, that was, it was a, a way for them to explore what the, the model, they're, they're called these, these actuals, what the model was capable of as far as generating images. It was then turned into a product. So instead of being just a beta where you could generate as much as you wanted, there was a, a credit system where you had to pay a little bit each time you did a generation. And literally a, a month later, like at the beginning of August, kind of out of nowhere, 
this other open source project called Stability AI, or, or the company Stability AI, released a, a model called Stable Diffusion that they had trained privately. So they had they had their own data set of, of images. They had their own algorithm that was sort of it's similar technology to to Dolly two, but not exactly the same because we don't know what OpenAI actually used. And they released Stable Diffusion open source. So whereas Dolly 2 is kind of behind closed doors. We don't know how it works. We can't really modify it, can't generate whatever we want. Now the internet has stable diffusion, which can be remixed into all of these other tools and programs can be put into pipelines with other image generators and itself can be retrained or fine tuned on smaller data sets, kind of like the way GPT-2 could be trained on, on text sets. And so that's now off and going. It's been out for a few weeks now. And it's just, it's exploded the, the AI art space. It's made the generation of high quality imagery, or at least like decent quality kitsch. It's like easier than it's ever been. Yeah, and because the internet is uh, just going nuts uh, with uh, it. Yeah. yeah. Two, week, two weeks ago, or a week ago, someone sent me a Dolly 2 image what I thought was a Dolly 2 image. And mm. I said, how'd you get access? But it must have been this other thing. It was probably stable diffusion, yeah. Yeah, and when we talked, Stephen, you didn't have the animations, so. Right, that, that, that is something yeah. that's been created since we talked. And literally like every day, it feels like a new, a new tool or a new iteration of these tools mm. um, is released. People are integrating these into Photoshop workflows and um, online like collaging tools. So you can literally just like drag a okay, box well, and yeah, define what, the thing and what, yeah. What gets me thinking, this is visual, mm -hmm. which is good because that's, it's, we don't talk about see, hear, feel for nothing, right? Mm -hmm. in the UM system. It's like, it's good we can see, but we need to make analogies across the modalities. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing here, how does that translate into what we might hear as a string of words in a certain language or in a certain controlled vocabulary language? Mm -hmm. Um, what, what's the verbal analog of those angles and scales? Um, and then, uh, <clears throat> the emotional body, mm -hmm. how this affects. And we can now modulate the emotional body directly through contact at the molecular level with um, olfactory science. One of um, my old, old students when he was a kid actually now has a company in Vermont uh, where they're um, doing VR with rigorous, scientific um, olfactory stimuli. And um, so we can actually get the emotional body through sights, sounds, and molecular touch now. Um, anyway, um, so it really makes me think um, What's it struggling to do? We, we can see visually how it's struggling to understand something. Coherence um, with a description that's being aided by this other stuff. But it almost, if we wanted to personify it, which we have to be very careful of, obviously, 
so we don't look like idiots. <laughs> um, if we, but if we wanted to personify it, it's like, what's it struggling to do? Visual. I, I and, love that question. <laughs> and and uh, what is the verbal or even emotional analog of any of that? So wow. Something, something that you didn't see yet, Shenzhen, was there was also a, um, so I guess you saw like the, the interactive process with the, the code and the code and something that Stephen and I did a couple of weeks ago that- the, uh, uh, What are you did. alluding to? The, uh, the, the code and the code? The animation. Yeah, so, I think I, I think it might be demo time. I think that's what Fia is, is pointing to here, where I I want to explore the, the questions you just brought up, Shinzen, as we actually generate an image together, as we actually interact with oh, Dolly. Oh my god, okay. Right. So that's uh, that's yeah. you're gonna uh, you're gonna let yeah. the you're gonna let the guest on the starship enterprise take the controls <laughs> with captain kirk and uh, let's, Spock let's go into the holiday watching go into the holiday nervously and, and run it up. yeah <laughs> oh yes yeah and Shinsen, the holodeck i remember that yeah and Shinsen, i'm excited for you to see see this part because now there's going to be like a conversation but yeah. you know not a textual not entirely textual based but a conversation that um yeah when i was when i was in that process i i had a lot of pings to the the type of conversation and interaction that you might uh have described with other uses of ai so mm -hmm. let's, let's see so here we go um shinzen i'm gonna invite oh, you to... okay so let me mm -hmm. i see open ai lo logo here so dali yeah my collection is that like a, well your well, customized focus on the on the middle so oh so i right know now, that but i i yeah. i, I want to see oh, where, where i yeah. am Just this is, start with a detailed we're, description we're in dolly so this is this is my like wow. collection of, of generations that are just on here and these are not cherry picked but this is the ones that i've done since like this is the one we did with the uh um one of the the rendering um, I think this was, yeah, it wasn't, Thea, wasn't this yours that we, we settled on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, wait, uh, hold on. I've seen this before or something. No, I've seen this before. <laughs> that would be before. surprising. <laughs> no, I, I've seen it. Oh, or something Shinzen, very I, similar. Oh, Shinzen, did you send this to him? In the email. Okay, yeah. Oh, so this is this is the one that we did with her, and that she showed you. So yeah, that's that's where we are here. Um, and the uh, the interface is very simple. It's just you know. Okay, pop in yeah. A, that, a prompt. Slow down a little bit. Slow down. Sure. I'm I'm trying to see with my eyes. Start with a detailed description, and there's mm -hmm. like a f chef's choice. Surprise yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, and it even prompts the prompt. Oh, whoa, yeah. it's pretty uh, childproof. Uh, you put in the prompt. If you're too Nothing lazy, else. you say, surprise me. This, yeah. uh, someone put some thought into this. And then you hit teddy bear. Oh my God. C <laughs> can, it can it take Chinese? Um, at the moment, its understanding of other languages is pretty limited. Some people have had some success with Japanese. Um, I don't know how to input Chinese characters on here, but if you're very ever likely, interested, I'll show you. But uh, I, I know what one thing that st Stability AI is doing is they are training localized versions of Stable Diffusion for every language in the world, or at least oh for a very wide range of languages. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing because um, we tried some of this 
with more obscure languages. Uh, you might meet at some point another person that's helping me with Raymond. His name is Thiha. Mm. He's Burmese. Mm. And um, shall we say we'd give it an A for effort? Uh, it, it did not. Uh, it's, uh, it was pretty pigeon Burmese to an actual Burmese person, but yeah. it, it looked it looked okay to me. It was Burmese script, but uh, so with with the stable diffusion thing, oh my god! If if yeah. they really pull that off, uh, that what a contribution! Huge. So I, I'd love to, uh, to to dive into this if if you feel ready, Shinsen, to actually yeah, go, like, go into the process of generation. So I'm going to ask you to just close your eyes and um, say the first seven words that come to mind, nouns, adjectives, textures, colors, whatever. So let me ask a question. Mm. I'm assuming the order doesn't matter. It's just Correct. the cardinality of the set, not Correct. the order in which they were given. Mm -hmm. Wow. And they can be any, you want seven, yeah. and it can be in any you can involve any word classes, nouns, any. verbs. Yeah. But it should sound like taken together, they constitute a visual image. Sure. But I've not never I've never done I, I've never done this before. So I'm sorry, but there's an analytic preamble <laughs> <laughs> that comes with my turf. Um <laughs> uh, well, I don't want to waste any time, right? I want to understand and really, what we're doing. For this, um, it, it's an iterative process. So first thought, best thought, you know, as little analysis well, I've, I've, as possible. I've, I've got ulterior motive here already. Of course. I, I've, I've, <laughs> I've, I've got a research agenda in my belly already, okay. just with this. I'm just warning you, okay? <laughs> but this is the kind of problem you like to have. You want to... A team needs chemistry. They need yeah. energy. Um, so yeah. Don't oh try, yeah. You know, don't try oh, to yeah. over engineer your intuition here. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, but I will, uh, and then we'll correct that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, hold it just a second. We can also, there'll be multiple opportunities to try things. Yeah, well, I, just, I do uh, want Because I think a, a big part of, of this is, is feeling the feedback loop between fabrication and result. Um, and, and feeling that Titan was one of the, the most compelling aspects of this exploration. Um, to go from thought to image almost immediately and then back to new thoughts, um, it becomes a conversation uh, rather than trying to design a, a particular output or converge on something. It becomes an exploration of the space of, of what these beings know. So... Um... Uh...
Let's see what we got. What okay. are you up to over there? <laughs> He's writing things down. <laughs> I was I was writing down. Yeah. yeah. High levels of. Mm -hmm. Broad based personal happiness. Broadly encountered <laughs> and broadly relevant. <laughs> Bodhisattva. <laughs> no, don't put them in there because okay. just that. Um, Let me see. This high levels of broad based personal happiness, comma, broadly encountered. I think we'll go and Look, comma. You put, you put Bodhisattva because that's the space you've been exploring, Stephen. It is, and it's, it's it? fun. It's fun to give it a, a character to sort of coalesce. I mean, it, this will work. I have put in poetry. I've put in. I, I want to see. This but. is highly abstract. Yeah. I'm just curious what it does with this concept. Okay, let's let's do it. So it's going to generate now. It'll show some examples of what else has been created in the meantime. And then on the right, you'll see some recent generations that I've created. And here cool. it is. <laughs> it seems to have mostly interpreted your ask in terms of stock photo descriptions, uh, because these, these terms tend to be kind of like corporate ease. <laughs> oh my God, is this interesting yeah <laughs> wait 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 that's not bad it's not bad that one and then so it, it i can tell like what what dolly thinks and that was, one's not bad and there was some chinese character on that one kind Did of I, see? I mean in on i thought i saw above it but it doesn't matter Yes. Oh, no, I was looking at something else. Yeah. Okay, so can I choose? Yeah, well, we, what we can do from here, a few things. We can pick one of these images and generate variations on it. We can do an entirely new prompt, or we could modify this prompt slightly. So things like adding an art style or, um, or, or giving it a subject or some okay. kind of a description. Okay, yeah. I see that this is highly abstract. Yes. And but and not particularly already, poetic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let me engineer my prompt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> high levels of broad based happiness you could just say a, oh, a a a a community uh. it uh that has high levels of broad based personal happiness and then you fill in the rest steve Mm. Um, uh, a, a give an art style, uh, yeah, and um, I guess it, you know in the style of, um, and then a pretty, um, a pretty good yeah. one. This, this tends to produce just beautiful results. Is digital art trending on art station? These were some of the suggestions from from OpenAI. Um, one of the the key things to understand about these models is. You can you can understand them as 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 generative search engine is like one term, and so because the the input data has been you know ta basically uh, oh high broad based levels of personal high levels of broad based personal happiness uh, high levels of broad based personal happiness yeah. or we can just go high levels of happiness or broad based personal you know I we like can, those probably won't change and what, what is art station 
Is that a real um, thing? It's it is it is a website that that where people post their digital art, and so it's a way of pointing the AI to a genre I, I of it. imagery yeah. and saying like, make me something like this. So this is this is interesting. This is a diverse range. Oh, this already is not bad. Yeah. So that's an interesting place to take it. <laughs> um, this one, I, I don't, I don't know, but okay. <laughs> well, wait, wait, why? Because no this is very strange. Yeah. And not on topic at nope. all. But then you got this one. <laughs> <laughs> And this one. So the, the 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 results we just are seeing now are less diverse than when the prompt was a little more abstract. They're still yep. more diverse than some of the things that we saw in the one that. But maybe Art Station. Yeah, is so not particularly this... into portraying high levels of broad-based personal happiness. So we could do impressionist painting by. Uh, whoa, 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 mm -hmm. whoa, whoa, whoa. How mm -hmm. about. Um, Ooh. In a. It could be. Hey, you know what? Yeah. I like your Monet. Let's see what that looks like. I was going to do uh, two, two variations on this. Um, we'll do impressionist painting by Claude Monet, and then we'll do uh, a, a photograph. Um, style description because we could we could potentially look into the space of like uh you know stock photos of people or photos of crowds uh and see how how she would render that uh so impressionist painting by monet we just get you know people well but monet yeah. never painted those people true those people dali painted these people those Just people now. are. <laughs> that doesn't look like high levels of personal happiness, though. Yeah, it seems mm -hmm. like it has weighted the the Monet part <laughs> the mm -hmm. heaviest in the community. So here's so an example. Maybe because Monet is so distinctive. Uh, yeah, it might have so... narrowed the space a lot. So how about um, uh, something like in, uh, in a Chinese or Japanese painting style? Uh, yeah, in the style of Chinese painting. So well, there's, of course, like a, two dozen kinds of Chinese painting, but we'll mm -hmm. see what it does with that. Probably we'll get like a mashup of many different styles. Ah. Hmm. So these are quite abstract, but vaguely Chinese or Japanese. Yeah, you know, even but... putting in characters that are sort of like relevant, but not really. So I have a suggestion, Stephen, mm -hmm. part of what you've been doing is kind of acting as a guide for people through this yeah. process and, and helping almost in like an iterative art therapy way. What would you, so say you were working with Shinzen in that way and you wanted to bring his dream to life, how would you help guide this to, I mean, is the way this that I've, The way that I've done it before and where, where I have the most experience is, is working with portraiture. And I find I find this tends to to um, create a good kind of convergence between um, descriptors and styles and and subject material. It's it's much easier to kind of feel the feedback of rendering a, a, a portrait of a of a subject than to to render an abstract scene. Um, so I would do Stephen. I, I, yeah. I have to ask you a question. Sure. Are you doing this professionally? People are paying you for this as a service? I mean, not uh, like officially. I have a Patreon. But, 
But would I've you mostly like just to done it be doing for that? friends. That's a great question. So I could. Um, I quite enjoy it. I don't feel like professional at it yet, but I, I'm getting You're a little bit more. You're creating a new profession. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Dude. Um, and at the same time, this field is evolving so quickly that it, it takes a lot of my energy just to keep up with the pace of change. You tell me and... about it. <laughs> I listen to ML News every morning. Yeah, and it's, yeah, yeah, there's new Yannick, stuff. Yannick Kilcher, I, I gotta I have my dose, you know. Oh <laughs> yeah, old <laughs> Reddit. <laughs> I um, love him, but, but he said he was banned from YouTube for a while. What's behind that? What's the he, gossip? So, well, the, do you know what he did with with Four Chan? I don't even know what Fortune is. You What's don't 4chan? know what Four Chan is. That's probably for the best. Um, so it's a very oh, four, dark chan. four chan. Four chan. Four chan. I'm sorry. I, I thought you. Said... <laughs> yes, so, I know what he did with four chan. I'm I very that, aware of what he did. That might have been why he got banned. I, I'm not sure. Why? But he... What was wrong? Why was that? Four chan is supposed to be exactly the place you'd never get banned for. Well, it's not <laughs> banned where. By from I, I don't know. I, I would have to. Do. I would have to do more research. But anyways, we're kind of yeah. That's a that's a rabbit trail. Feeling um, a sin. Feeling a So back to so, this, so let me uh, to answer your question, Thea, and and to to kind of bring it back here. What what my process has been is to kind of like take you know the input of the person and then to merge that with the the expression or the art style that I've I've like been following with with these tools. And that's generally to like generate a, a figure that is apparently praying or meditating uh, or in some kind of a, a peaceful um, repose. And then to, to kind of like uh, see that, that figure develop through the lens of what is arising in that, that subject. So for you, this high levels of broad-based personal happiness is like a really strong theme. Um, so I would just describe that, a bodhisattva, uh, with high levels uh -huh. of, of broad-based so personal I happiness, see, praying, I see meditating. Why, I see why you knee-jerk-wise wanted to put in bodhisattva. I'm understanding yeah. your process a little bit better. Exactly. Let me reflect it back to you. Mm -hmm. So what, what you're saying is you've developed a little bit of an algo with this uh, because yeah. you, you uh, which is a strategy. Mm -hmm. And you've had that great joy of being running out in front of everyone else in science, looking back and realizing, no, there's no one in front of me. I'm the first. <laughs> to... Yeah, welcome to the club. I'm, I may not be that's the first. Good... I'm pretty close to that. Yeah, so here's, yeah that's, you know... that's as good as it gets. And this is your algo. You've this figured out my algo. you got to yeah. contract to this kind of thing and then see what we can do. And that sounds yeah. to me like actually an article that you should write as a scientist. Well, I'll, I'll consider that. Um, so we're still, we're in the process though. And, and so this is kind of a next, next iteration of it is, as I, I wanna invite you to see kind of the, the feedback from combining this, this, I think is the key phrase, this with high levels of broad-based personal happiness. So here was Bodhisattva with high levels of broad-based personal happiness. And I do praying, meditating, which tends to, to create sort of a meditative posture or Anjali Mudra or something. And then we'll, we start with close up because I'll show you a next stage of this process is actually to build out a larger. Image. Wow, this is just amazing. I get and it. Then, yeah. So, so of these four, is there one that draws you or we can modify slightly, ha! but I want to find you one know, of them yeah. and then iterate on it. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to take me through, uh, is it better this way or is it better that way kind of thing? Kind of. Yeah. You, yeah. You know, that's what my dad did. He was an optometrist. Optometrists <laughs> will do that better this way, better that way. They're testing all the parameters of yeah. optics, so right? In this case, you got four eyes or eight eyes or, you know, eight lenses, whatever. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So which one of these, if any, mm -hmm. 
is capturing what I had in mind. Mm. And the answer is none of them particularly. Okay. Because you got the personal happiness, high levels, but the broad based, maybe that's too abstract. Yeah. So it means lots of people experiencing high levels of personal happiness, but that takes us from a portrait to something else, mm -hmm. which is a little bit out of your usual working zone. But I think you understand the semantic issues here. Yeah, well, we're, we're describing uh, we're, we're describing a state of mind and that's and and the images is, is trying to, to kind of like evoke that but there's a level of abstraction that is maybe like too far now I have gotten like really good results with high abstraction but we can we can kind of swing the pendulum the other way a bit and be more like visually descriptive um, or add more more um, adjectives more poetic adjectives. how about a a how about this mm -hmm. uh, this is similar to what we did before, but I'm sure it'll be different because it's different every time anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, a large group of people sharing personal happiness And then you can put it, I don't think you want the praying meditator, yeah. but you can say what style mm -hmm. uh, Oh, you can say where, yeah, yeah, exterior like wide shot. Um, how about uh, Renaissance oil painting? Uh, how about more specific? A particular one, Michelangelo. Mm. This this might be enough. Renaissance painting, oil on canvas. Um, generally, with with larger compositions, these tools do not tend to do too well. This this is this is one limitation of them so far. Is like composing like. A, a diverse scene uh, tends to be somewhat difficult, but let's see. I mean, these are, and you, know, you can see that, that for instance, facial details tend to get kind of like muddy. This is especially a feature of Dali. Oh, the, oh, 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 oh. Oh. I think this is starting to, to get the idea. Okay. Yeah, show me what else it can do. And, well, and then I like in this one, it, it, so this is the thing that Dali also does um, that OpenAI chose is when, I, when you say people or like man or woman or like any generic person word, it will actually add on words to your prompt that make it more diverse. So it will add like black or Hispanic or you know, one of these to, to kind of like correct a little bit of the bias in the training data. That's, but that's is, actually good because it does, that bias is there, yeah. It, it can tend to though, because it, it, can, it can tend to skew the prompts in ways that are unexpected though, because you, you don't know what word is actually being added on. Um, and some cultural oh, they do that work for they, some, but not others. Oh, mm -hmm. they, you mean they do that blindly? You don't? Yes. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's so, <laughs> so Stephen, it'd be really cool if we did um well you know, some of but you know what? Thanks to that, I mm -hmm. actually like the either the Chinese scene, which is what this looks like to me, okay. Korean or Chinese people, or the African scene. 
Mm -hmm. Those would be the two places if I had to choose. With probably a preference to the African. So one cool thing but, that they but added. Each would be interesting. Each could take in an interesting direction. I'm, I'm going to get some juice. I'll be back in just a second. Of course. I'll let and you I'm play gonna, with it. Yeah, I'm going to expand it a little bit and see, uh, see what comes out when we, when we generate. I want, I want Shenzhen to see this part. So let's mm -hmm. wait. What it'll do is it'll generate them and then um, we'll give it, we'll have a few choices. So, we'll pause the recording. Yeah, so there. Oh, you, I like can this. Can you go back so you can see that happening? Um, I'll do it once more. I'll do, I'll like expand the left side as well. Okay. Um, just a random fist <laughs> coming out of someone's head there. <laughs> I think this is probably the most coherent. And this kind of maybe is the compositionally the most interesting. But yeah, I like. I like this because it, it begins to add some diversity in there to the right. I'm going to get some kombucha while Shenzhen is getting juice. Thea, what's y'all's um, schedule look like? I have something in an hour, and I know that in a half an hour is two hours from when we started. So, do you do you, should we try to keep it in that half an hour window? I think we should. This in deference to your time, yeah. Okay. Um, well, I have an hour now, but yeah, I think it'll Give it'll you a make break. sense to uh, show this next process with the the images and if you guys want to jam on that another time you know you totally can yeah um but it would also love to save a little bit of time uh for just some discussion in shenzhen to share uh the, about the raymond. raymond yeah and see what the vision how the vision might have been inspired just already from interacting with this So I think we can do that in 30 minutes. We'll see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I also want to run this through, um, we can run this through uh, Dream Studio, can run this through Stable Diffusion and see what, what comes out. And what is Dream Studio? So this is, this is for Stable Diffusion. So this is, okay. um, yeah, this is the other right. tool. So let's, yeah, let's do the expansion and check out the other tool and anything mm -hmm. else you would say that's, you know, interesting about this process. Yeah. Okay. okay so 
So something I want to show you, Shenzhen, is um, Dali recently added the ability to do out painting. So you can you can take an initial generation and then you can you can add a frame. In this case, I added a, a, a bit to the right of it and take inspiration from the initial and then expand it out. So here are a few possibilities for, for painting more of this particular image. And I was drawn to either this one or this one for their coherence. Is there one that you prefer? No, I'll go with your preference. Cool. So let's let's do this one. And then I can show you on the other side of it um, what this looks like. I, I basically, I can see I can do this in any direction. So I could expand it up or down or left or right. Yeah, um, I remember this. Uh, I saw a presentation. They had a Chinese scroll that they had extended out forever. Yeah. <laughs> wow. There's many possibilities this is new from expansions from of Renaissance art. Um, so this so is, it is new generating. From the last time that we met. Hmm? You had to do this manually last time. Yeah, and so they've they've recently added this feature, which makes it quite a bit easier. And then okay. while that's generating, I want to show you um, some versions of of this that were were made in stable diffusion. So this is using the exact same prompt um, that we used in, in OpenAI. And you can see it's much more, I'd, I'd say much more uh, renaissance-y. It's not coming through for me yet. I don't know if you're- Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I think I need to instead share my desktop rather than and Dali. So yeah, here's so here's some results from from stable diffusion. More definitely more men <laughs> in these. Huh. And this is the Renaissance style, probably having an influence. This yeah. So I won't get too much into detail here, but. Um, one of the differences with stable diffusion is it's much more, um, it's like a manual transmission, whereas DALI is more of an automatic. And with, with stable diffusion, I can, for instance, go into the prompt and add exclamation points to emphasize the weight of that word or concept on the output, or I can de-emphasize something by putting it in, in uh, parentheses. That's clever. So I could de-emphasize Renaissance, for instance, if I if I don't want that as much, um, and then just regenerate. You can see it's quite a bit faster than Dali. Okay. Yeah. I mean, these are still pretty renaissance-y. <laughs> <laughs> Can we try a different style? Well, sure. just go back sure to the African. Oh, yeah. what, I, the African was promising. Yeah. That was my first choice anyway. So I love this. Oh, there's like, there's like a woman like, uh, yeah, that with her was, arms up in the background. That's original. Really cool. There she is in the foreground. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Wow. So, do we, we want to go with yeah, the, more, more people with their arms out are good? This one's blue. good. Oh, that one's this even one? better. Oh, stabilize that. I Let, think this is the one. Yeah. Yeah. Let's start with this. All right. So, I think that's a pretty good, pretty good image, just as is. Um, it's absolutely then, something thing you could see on any wall in a yeah. building that was yeah. commissioned. Mm -hmm. It looks like there's hats being tossed in the background. Well, who knows yeah. what it'll do with all this stuff. So I, what's the next step, man? We diffuse it and the then- The possibilities are endless. You could take this output and then use it as an input in stable diffusion and diffuse it more. 
right? And to, so maybe to get better faces or, or more detail or, or something like that, um, you, could, uh, you, could, you could take this and, and abstract it more from, from stable diffusion. You could say, I want this style, but I want, um, I want variations on it. So let me, let me actually see if I can bring that in. Um, upload. And yeah, we'll get that. Uh, is it this one? Yes, that is the one. Okay, so so now, yeah, we can we can give it. Let's just say we'll give it fifty percent strength here. Did you and, go down to the small version? Um, I changed the. Okay, here we go. So I can actually change the width. Yeah, here we go. So now, now it's more the the right proportions. Can we get that um, woman with the arms up in? Maybe. I think, yeah, there we go. And height. Okay, so that's good. Um, and so it's gonna it's gonna do a fifty percent. I actually want to decrease this to thirty percent, so it's not abstracting too much. And we'll let it do. Yeah, we'll let it do. And then do you keep the prompt? Because we might mm -hmm. want to get rid of Renaissance then, I don't know. Yeah, as a, we'll just say oil on canvas and dream that. And let's see what happens. And uh, Shinzen, just to give you a, a kind of an overview, we're, we're gonna wrap up in the next like 20 minutes or so, uh, 20 to 30 minutes. And I would love to to leave some time to hear about Raymond and hear specifically how any of this might influence that or um, just any other conclusive ideas, um, because we can we can play with this another time. I, I would love to to do that. Um, so here's here's the way it it saw that and re-rendered some of it. Wow. <laughs> I kind of like you can see. I think their faces appear to be smiling more in this one, but it is also more abstract. And then this is more of a, a diffuse crowd of people. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's just shifting too fast for me to see it. Sorry. I'm used to, uh, I, my eyes have adjusted to these, so I, I like filter through them a lot faster. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Uh, look at the other. I think this is this is a promising one. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah. Let's diffuse it. We're gonna diffuse it and then refuse it. So to Good. speak. You know what I what I'd like to do with this one is um, is upscale it and, and have that be be where we end things today. Um, because you can you can of course uh, put any of these outputs through. I like this one too. Um, you can put any of these outputs into uh, other tools. Uh, so the one yeah, that I like. Yeah, you're is, right. That other one could be interesting, also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's a there's a final step to, which is uh, upscaling, and uh, that uses a different tool. This one's called GFP GAN, um, and we'll put in. What and does upscaling mean? Um, you'll or see. What I'll, I'll you, show you just said. It means to take uh, an, an image at a lower resolution and using an AI that is trained to reverse the process of JPEG compression and, and downscaling, it, it basically infers details. And it, it's kind of like um, on the CSI shows when they go enhance. You know, it takes a pixelated thing and like adds the details back in. There, there are AIs that can do this extremely quickly. Um, I like the one that had more smiles in it. I think that's this one. But you, you go with your intuition. Yeah, let's. We can do both, but we'll go with this one first. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna two x it. Ah, maybe we'll, we'll three x it. Shouldn't take too long. And, uh, and then I'll show you the comparison between the, the two outputs. Um, it's particularly stark with, with like faces, but cool, download that and look at the, at the outputs. 
Okay, so we've got, yeah, there we go. So uh, we'll move this one out. Can we view them side by side? Kind of. Um, I don't have an easy way to do that, but I'll, for instance, um, yeah, I'll, for instance, zoom into like this woman. You can see how pixelated the, the faces are. And then with the upscale, <laughs> it's a little bit cursed. It's a little it's bit actually cursed, worse. Like, yeah. <laughs> but I believe it will get better. You know, these, these tools are. I think I saw that in a. In a movie, yeah. of, well, now look at her. See, she's starting to that yeah. one. <laughs> but Some yeah, of them are good. like uh, this is the like the Beverly Hills cosmetic surgery Botox <laughs> yeah. gone terribly wrong. Gone wrong. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused. Why is the detail that's been enhanced so localized? Is that due to this image being? crowd or is that just yeah being a crowd being kind of like uh, an abstract painting in some places but very detailed in others i mean it, <laughs> we're, you know these 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 ais are doing their best to make sense of of this world you know whatever this world is that's presented to them and they don't always make the best creative choices but they often do like okay um in in this case i think that that broadly we're trying to do something very complex very quickly and the way that i would actually do something like this is to build much smaller frames and and do much more uh, outcropping so that we have much more detail on faces and then we're just we're expanding out and kind so of there's like, a whole there's a whole strategy yeah that yeah. you are discovering and inventing I mean, we're, to we're make all this work. Yeah. discovering it together, you know, as all of the, the AI wow. artists, you know. So yeah. um, how much um, how much time do we have left? This has been very enriching. I want to say like 15 minutes, Thea? 15, 20? I, I can go over, but uh, let's, let's just constrain well, it let, to something like 30 minutes at most. To, I'll yeah. set a timer. I'll so, set a timer. <clears throat> You know, the first question is, okay. are you folks interested in helping me build Raymond um, after I, 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 of course, answer all your questions? Uh, I don't expect <laughs> you to just say yes <laughs> right now, uh, but, you know, once you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> uh, I'm looking for help. And it's obvious to me. Do you go by Steve or Stephen? Which do you Steven. prefer? Stephen? Yeah. yeah, I'm another Stephen. That's hard because I was Steve all my life until I was <laughs> in Zen. Yeah. But, uh, so, <clears throat> uh, you obviously have enough background, I think, to help me a lot. Um, so I can describe the context of the project. I have no um, expectations that you would do anything. And mm. the same goes for you, Thea, because we've talked about your background and interests and so forth. So <clears throat> I call it the Raymond Project. Uh, that was named after Raymond Lull, L-L-U-L-L, -L -L, which is the Jeopardy question, who invented superhuman artificial general intelligence to solve very human current problems? And I say the answer is Raymond Lull, the <clears throat> most creative thinker no one's ever heard of. Huh. Have you ever heard of him, Stephen? No. Okay. <laughs> I yeah. love that his name is a is a palindrome. <laughs> it's yeah, but what language is that? What has double L's 
at the beginning, well, Welsh has double L's at the beginning, Indeed. double L's at the end. Yeah, What's that, that it wouldn't about? be pronounced that way. In Welsh, it would be Schlau. <laughs> I'm Raymond so Schlau. impressed <laughs> that you would know anything. I, have you been to Wales? Or? I have been to Wales. And, yeah. So you, you would know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, say it again. Schlau. 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 Yeah, you kind of like eat your tongue. It's a little bit like Schlau. the... Uh, yeah, flow, flow. But there's a bit of an aspiration as well. I, I, I mean, and this was six years ago, so cool. that's my best recollection. Well, if we were in Spain, <clears throat> you'd pronounce it something like Juji. <laughs> um, anglicized to lull. Mm -hmm. But his first language was not Spanish or certainly not English. Um, he, he came from the Catalonian speaking area around the Balearic Islands, Mallorca, Menorca, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, Barcelona, mm -hmm. which is always associated with great artistic creativity and famous artists. Uh, Gaudi, for example, so tell us Dali. about uh, So um, uh, he lived in the 13th century and he spoke Catalonian and Latin and Arabic and oh. probably a bunch of other languages. And uh -huh. he had a lot of interactions with um, Arabs, Muslims in North Africa, and he spoke their language. And he was, I think, a very creative thinker because he got the idea, he saw essentially that, I, I mean, I'm, a little idealizing and simplifying the history here to tell a story. You know, history is always more nuanced, but to tell a good story out of it, um, he assumed that Christianity, which was for him Roman Catholicism, was true. Um, that would just be an assumption. But he saw that if you have debates with Muslims or Jews or Tartars, which is what they would have called uh, East Asians, the Mongols, don't want to mess with them. They were definitely a force. Um, well, what he noticed is, you know, we trot out our Bible and our Pope and our church decisions, they trot out the Quran and their ulama, their you know wise decisions of the community and their sunnah and what have you. And we just argue and then we fight. It turns into a jihad or crusade, and this is not doing anyone any good. Mm -hmm. So the out-of-the-box thought, especially in the 13th century for a Catholic, the out-of-the-box thought is the problem is not with the Muslims. It's with us. We actually don't understand Christianity. If we did, we'd be able to explain it and everyone would agree, everyone in the world would see the truth. So maybe we can create a combinatorial device of somehow that has superhuman capabilities of lining up logical possibilities. Uh, this was suggested to him by combinatorial squares that were used in Islamic uh, astrolabs and that kind of astronomy equipment that they were very good at. 
So he actually even got the idea from the Islamic world, but he took it in a different direction. It would have superhuman combinatorial capabilities. So it would go through all the possibilities and give us the answer, but give us the reasons for all the answer, the answer also. So that's all we need now. We, we know it's going to conclude that God is three in one. Not hmm. like the Muslims who say God is one in one, or the Jews who say God is one and one, or the Tartars who say God is one and many, and Genghis Khan is one of those gods. Uh, unlike all of them, we know science, and that's what he meant. Aristotle was what science was in those days. That was their approximation of what we would call modern science. And in some ways, not too bad, right? It was around for quite a while. So we're going to use science to sort this all out. We know Christianity will come out on top, but it'll give us the reasons. Then we won't have to fight anymore. We'll mm. solve our uh peacefully be able to solve things. And furthermore, if there are discrepancies between the Bible and the Pope and the church decisions and what science shows, well, this new device will be able to show us that there's not a discrepancy because there's only one truth. Mm -hmm. None of this Thomistic, non-overlapping, um, what do they call it? Magisteria, oh, where science yeah. is one thing and <laughs> religion is something else. No, Raymond Lull, science, superhuman combinatorial device will not only show us how to defeat Islam and everything else with just pure reason. It will show us how to fix any seeming discrepancy between science and, and the one true religion, which we know to be Trinitarian can you Christianity. Relate to, can you relate this to your project oh, now? Well, I think I'm seeing the connection, but uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to do it. Yeah. I see the new AI as capable of healing the world in this yeah. century. And and can I can I riff on this, Shinzen? Is that, is that enough of a preamble? Because this is starting to fire off yeah. some, some things that I'm aware of. Um, healing in the sense of integrating, and and it, something that that is very. Um, very exciting and very inspiring to me that I've seen with these, uh, especially the image model. I think it's, it's happening with the, the text models, but it's much more apparent with the, the image model is these are reflections, integrated, somewhat coherent reflections of a broad swath of humanity as we have expressed ourselves through text or through image, the, the data that goes into them is very important. You know, what, what subset of the internet or what subset of art you put into the AI is, will bias it in some ways. But one of the things that we're seeing is there's, there's a way in which these are, I mean, like for instance, um, I, I tried prompting Dolly with, with like, Islamic bodhisattva and like Jewish bodhisattva and these these kinds of like matchups of concepts um, and relatively coherent images would would emerge from these that that begin to to draw on and kind of like integrate and bridge the at least the image space between these these somewhat separate uh, domains and in in so doing there. They're kind of, I mean, the, the bias that they that they show us is reflective of the bias that's in the training data, for instance, with open AI, seeing it biased toward, toward white or male figures for certain um, titles and, and roles. But um, what, what I see as very interesting possibilities here are 
the the AIs are also discovering spaces within the the latent space. They're discovering locations within the latent space of all art or all concepts that we may not have even realized were there. And so one very interesting thing that people have seen, for instance, with the image models is new new creatures that have like a, a, a specific name, like a specific string of text. But when you use that string of text consistently with different styles, this creature will like appear coherently with certain features in all of those different styles. And so what I think it's pointing to is that maybe the same as, as uh, Raymond was uh, suspecting, there are, there are kind of like universals or um, there are, are, I mean, platonic ideals would be another way to point to these, but there are like dharmas that are kind of beyond the individual expressions that have arisen through culture. Yeah. And these models are beginning to discover them and help us to, to explore those spaces and see them. Um, and in so doing, they're, they're kind of helping us blur the, the seemingly uh, strict boundaries between categories. So what you're talking about here hmm. goes to, I guess I would say deep new science. I don't mm. know if you'd agree with that, but that's the phrase that comes to my mind. Yeah, it feels resonant. That's one step beyond Raymond. Mm. Raymond doesn't need that. But mm. it's good to consider that. Mm. We want to be comprehensive. But I've had many interactions now with people in this field, like yourselves. Um, I know what to expect. Um, there's always the same problem. Every time I've ever talked to anyone that knew really knew something about this field. Hmm. I've always encountered the same problem. The problem is your mind goes immediately to where your mind just went, which is not a problem. That's not a bug, that's a feature. We want, our, we want to go there. That's important new science. Mm -hmm that, I mean, some people are saying, if this thing works out, this is the biggest invention ever. It's bigger than fire. It's bigger than the wheel. It's like, we're going to create our own parents. It's got a thousand IQ and it's <laughs> our friend. Um, or it's an infinite porn generator. I mean, it is, <laughs> it is a mirror. I mean, and that's, be, that's yeah, the dangerous yeah, thing so is I'm seeing. My thing mirrors. is, yeah. yeah, my thing is the technology I'm looking at doesn't require any of this new deep science. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit raining on your parade. Uh, but what I'm thinking is very impactful in history. It's the step we should and can currently take to align humans with what's coming. Mm -hmm. In other words, most of the talk is how do we align the fucking machines to our human intentions? That's important. Mm -hmm. Not saying that's not important. That's very important. But there's three other alignments that no one's even thinking about. And those are doable now. And the AI is what makes them doable. Hmm. That's Raymond. Uh, so Raymond is not at this level. 
of what okay. you're thinking, wouldn't it be great if? And I'm going to say this over and over again, because this is always the problem. I can't, you guys never give me the chance to explain Raymond, because you're going where you're going, which yeah. I totally honor, and I'm enriched by it. But well, you don't I, need and, to. And I want to yeah, say for this myself, is a, this is a different I don't thing. have a direction that, that I particularly like am going with this other than, than surfing okay. the, the so, thing. Let, so, so say so, more yeah. about it and yeah, yeah, I'm curious. So I see the normal alignment shit that everyone's wringing their hands about, over. Mm -hmm. And then I hear the, this could be the greatest invention ever <laughs> coming from intelligent people. Mm -hmm. And this is exciting. It's very, very exciting. So we have the alignment problems and then we have the, oh my God, maybe we finally are on to something really new in AI after so many spring and winter cycles. Is this it? Or did, did the little engine that could actually get over to the other side? So, We've been disappointed before, but it's yeah. looking promising. So um, Raymond you is designed to do three other alignments that no one's talking about. And it's a hybrid system. It uses the AI, this kind of AI, the uh, large model stuff. Mm -hmm. it, it uses that mostly for the interface to create okay. a natural conversational mode. What it's really implementing, it's an, a piece of educational software that is functioning as a mindfulness coach. It's implementing the unified mindfulness algorithm. Mm -hmm. It's meant to reproduce the expertise of a fully trained UM coach. But to do that in any language as a team of bright bots with human supervision, careful supervision, especially at the beginning. So it's a semi-automated um, highest quality possible, highest personalized 24 seven instruction and systematic focus training in the service of happiness broadly considered, high levels of personal happiness broadly uh, encountered. This is the world I hope the future will be. Mm -hmm. um, by doing three kinds of alignment that it can do now as this bright bot. First of all, it trains um, people in uh, focus, uh, focus factors, concentration, clarity, equanimity, but also a factor, a new mindfulness factor that I'm calling mental agility which is not in traditional mindfulness, but fits in the larger definition of mindfulness as focus training in the service of happiness broadly considered. Mm. It's a trainable skill. It's the ability to say what you mean. That's mental is, ability? Yes. So I put in a new mindfulness skill. I believe that we can train ordinary people, the people that think Donald Trump is the best thing for the world. Ordinary people will want to do this training for ordinary reasons of their life. 
regardless of where they are in the culture wars of the world or the political wars of the shooting wars of the world. It's you, everyone will want to do this because they win arguments better because we train them in how to use logic and evidence, but train them on shit they care about right now, which we find out immediately. But we're training them in Bayesian reasoning without them re realizing it. Hmm. Did you cover the three alignments? No, this is the first of the three. The first, okay. This is aligning humans to communicate with the AI, as opposed to aligning the AI to communicate with the humans. Mm -hmm. It's a way of organizing thought that will help ordinary embodied humans who have a high school education or less will seem immediately relevant and interesting to them. And they will be trained in mental agility by uh, a mindfulness formal technique that plays nicely with the other mindfulness techniques that teach them emotional maturity and self-control. And I'm gonna say that emotional maturity, self-control and the ability to clearly communicate in words and the abil ability to weigh logic and evidence mentally. These are all on the vector called maturity, biologically, ontologically, <clears throat> and by by biologenetically. So, um, we're training, there are things that the computer can do that are what Raymond Lull had in mind. The computer can do superhuman logic and evidence checking. What does that mean for the bullshit of political debates? The bullshit is immediately exposed. Oh yes, then they come back with more bullshit, but that's superhumanly exposed. In detail, the machine never gets tired of being logical and evidence-based, but bullshitters, us humans, we will and the machine will win. And the machine will determine who wins elections if, and that will be a good thing, if humans also have self-control skills and emotional maturity and self-awareness skills, then they can take the tough love of the superhuman logic and evidence checkers. If they can't, they're, they're not aligned with what the machine does very well or will do very well. And we need, we need the spirit of science. We need the spirit of light, not heat in our decision-making process all over the world at all levels. So yeah, there's something right now and it'll just get better that the computers can do. They can check our logic and evidence mm -hmm. and they'll do so forever, 24 seven. And they'll always win. They'll always be right, whether we like it or not. Once you get down to the details, but our, so, on one hand, we have to be aligned to organize our thoughts in terms of logic and evidence so that when we, every human presents them to the computer for advice, it's all aligned with the way the Bayesian 
inference that the computer is going to use, which Carl Friston would say is active inference, which flows from the laws of thermodynamics. Now we're in physical science. So we have about, sorry, we have 10 more minutes. I just want to make yeah. sure, are we getting to everything no, you want to say about not this? Not even beginning. I know. So let, <laughs> let's, well, but I'll give you the teaser. Okay. So without detail, use your imagination. But there's three alignments. One is humans getting trained to, in a way that's relevant to their personal interests right now, because mm -hmm. the AI can do that, right? It can customize. They're going to get trained in a, a process I call word power. We, I, we, I can send you the documentation on it in detail. It's a unified mindfulness technique, along with the other techniques like see, hear, feel. And it's meant to train mental agility. But it, it trains it using polynomial functors, really esoteric math that mm. the public doesn't realize is that esoteric math. But it's the underlying math for database integration. If you want to, if you have all these different cultures that don't know how to talk to each other, and they have these databases and millions and billions of dollars are involved. How do these, when you get these corporate mergers, whatever, what kind of mathematicians do they hire that are the pure math people to make that all go right? Not, not the, we're not talking about engineers. We're talking about yeah. research level theoretical math for merging databases. That's the math I have in the back of my mind for organizing how ordinary people talk about their lives for presentation to a computer that will then be able to monitor using mode dependent dynamical systems theory that comes out of applied category theory. It'll be able to monitor essentially all conversations in the world that it has access to and be an angel breath causing a drift towards greater mental agility but it's also teaching them all the other mindfulness techniques that lead to emotional maturity, self-awareness, uh, and self-control. You put that all together, we're preparing human beings to be resilient for times of change. So the first alignment is the alignment everyone's talking about, that they're worried about. Yeah, sure, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the good side, how humans can align with computers in a way that is relevant to embodied ordinary humans and become more better communicators and, and clearer thinkers. That's my first alignment. My second alignment is um, the alignment of an individual with themselves, which is a well-defined process that we can deliver through mindfulness training. The third is The, uh, the alignment of human communities with human communities. People mm -hmm. that vote in the US for Trump and people that vote in the US for anything other than Trump um, 
actually talking to each other intimately, I think it's doable. That's human, to, that's community to community speaking. I repeat, it's not an abstraction. Emotional maturity, self control, <laughs> self awareness, <laughs> the ability to speak carefully, the ability to utilize evidence and logic in your thinking. Elevate this at scale, and you actually will have the warring states sitting down and being human as opposed to apish. Hmm. So, and this, the technology to do this is currently available. Yeah, I'd love to know what the, I want to give Stephen a chance to respond, but also want to know like, what is the thing that you're trying to build now that is in service of that? Well, it's Raymond. It's the beginning. You got to start somewhere. We're it starting like on it, this. If, if I were to summarize, it would be um, something like a, like a sophisticated chat bot. Yes. That's trained on, that it both has an algorithmic yeah, background, yeah, but it's yeah, also yeah, trained you, you on it. a lot of dialogue. Yeah. That's uh, exactly. The, the UM system. That, yeah. That's right. And the UM mm -hmm. system is such a comprehensive and clear ontology. If you ever... Are, are you in to any of Juliana's trainings? I, I don't remember. I've, I've gone through like the very basic, like I think the basic UM thing that's on the website. And um, I've read your, uh, the PDF is like 70 page PDF on basic. Yeah, you, you have an um, idea. So yeah. they have a thousand page manual. That's a training manual. That's the official well, UM training. The, the, the crux of it, and I think the, the, the thing that I'm most interested in here is in terms of the data, the thing that would be most useful for, for training this would be um, dialogues with students. So I, I'm wondering like how much recorded um, interaction between student and teacher there, there is just in the UM system in terms of you know, videos or, or chats, like, like specifically, when when the kind of interaction is happening that you want to be happening, how much of that has really been recorded in any way? Wow. We have about one hour for every week in the last 12 years of me giving my A game at mm -hmm. the uh, life the life practice program. Okay. And then we have all my talks from every retreat from 20, 30 years, plus the Q and A. Yeah, the Q and A's all, are, are really where the meat but is. But it's all, it's all audio, not transcribed. I mean, there's like Otter AI, yeah, I, I, I know, like, I know. you know, yeah. like yeah. transcribing things but but specifically having having good data is like makes all the difference with with building these yeah. tools. Well, is that so enough talking, data? Uh, like two two three decades of it, talks Q and A and it, it, it might it might be it might not be actually <laughs> um, because it's it's but but we're getting into details here. I think if I were to reflect back, um, what I heard you say is like you you want to. You want to build this this automated chatbot training system that is that is all in addition to teaching mindfulness. It is also like teaching and transmitting better ways of communicating and thinking as a way of doing kind of like like broad cultural um, maturation or development or exactly. Although we're choosing mm -hmm. to include that component under the definition of mindfulness. Right. I think, um, so I think I understand like your, your vision for it well enough to, to say that like my, my interest and, and, and really more of my expertise is, is in a different way of doing the same thing. Like 
I, I'm very much in alignment of like, these, this is the kind of stuff that we have to train people in in order to solve the broad cultural issues and personal issues that we have. The, the mental health crisis, the, the division, the, the breakdown of trust, the meaning crisis, all of this. The way that I specifically have, have gone about it more up to this point is in embodied in-person training um, in the relational awareness space using, using circling. So being as much in a, a somatic awareness and then, and then like slowing down the, the interaction and the, the attunement between two people or between three people or in a group such that there's, a, there's kind of a whole body nervous system retraining, uh, re-experiencing that, that occurs. And I've, I've found in general that, that this tends to stick a lot more than si simply a, a semantic dialogue. Um, it is also very difficult to scale <laughs> this kind of embodied, you know, training process. And so I'm very interested in, in kind of like, how do we begin to merge these, these two together so that, that this can get out to more people? Um, but my, my, that's just kind of like where my, my focus is right now and, and building expertise there. Um, and I, I'm, I think this is like a really interesting concept, and I would want to, I would want to invite in that like like the the image dialogue component of it, and that feedback between clear description of of imagery and kind of what that evokes that to is, be a, yeah, a component that, of it. That's but, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. and, it, and it uh, these are directions I, I never considered. Yeah. Uh, well, this is good. You now have, uh, I think, a much clearer idea of some of my interests. Mm -hmm. And we've, we should probably talk again, right? I think we should. Uh, this is a good preamble. Um, so maybe, maybe we begin to wrap it there, Thea, because uh, I know you, you've got to go pretty shortly here, right? Yeah, that sounds, that sounds great. And I'm so glad mm -hmm. that we took the time for this and that I got to see a little bit more of the, the process and how it's developing. And yeah, I'm really, really curious how this will sit with you both and, and uh, perhaps produce any inspiration for your different visions or find any convergence there. Yeah. And uh, yeah. also, you know, I'm here working on this uh, project that I'll also take some inspiration for this. Um, I, I want to kind of, you know, walk with it, sleep with it, sit on it. Etc. Um, are either of y'all desiring like uh, a follow-up call in the next couple of weeks on this, or what? I have no particular, uh, no, absolutely no idea timeline-wise. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it was very enriching for me. Uh, I mean, wow, wow. So um, yeah, we'll take it from there. And of course, I'll send you the the images that we made today, um, the the pics and the, the like, the the cherry picked ones and kind of the 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 others, um, Shenzhen. And you know, basically, anytime if you want to jam with these tools, I'd be I'd be happy to help you oh, get up and running okay. with them well, to, yeah, to use them more on your own. Um, that's a, you know, put that in the email. P prompt me. I will Remind prompt me, you with that because that's going <laughs> to give me all sorts of uh, science cred with my friends yeah. because I'll know how to do this shit. <laughs> I want to give you some, some in, just initial resources. There's, there's an excellent little like PDF to read um, about prompting, like in prompt design. So you can see what people have already figured out. And then I'll give you links to, to get into to the, um, the betas and to, to use these tools. But I'm, I'm down to, to jam with you more and, and see what you create. Uh, I think it could be really, really powerful. Vince Horn, by the way, has has begun to use these and is like pairing the images that he makes with kind of like Dharma blurbs on Twitter. Who? Um, who? Vincent Horn. Uh, oh, Buddha Vince. Geek. Yeah, v Vince Horn. Vince is still into this. He's into Figures. this. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about Emily? Is she getting into it also? I don't know. Partner? I haven't seen anything from her yet, but I imagine. Huh. Um, and and uh, I also want to point to that. There's some, I have some thoughts around just the system in general, um, uh, what, what Raymond could be that, that could incorporate, um, like, I, I want to ask you more about like uh, neurofeedback or biofeedback and how that would play into this kind of a thing. So, well, that's some, the whole point. Yeah. We didn't even uh, get into, that's the only, 
that's the main reason for Raymond. Yeah. And Raymond I, I, is the sine qua non mm -hmm. for the neurotech to actually accelerate human happiness mm. without the integration guidance readily available to everyone. As the tech comes on, it's just going to turn into another high. It, yeah. That it's like, oh, isn't this great? We can zap a, a state or but a to integrate it into, into a but training to make, process yeah, over to time. Make, yeah, That's to make that something that actually has a significant impact on personal uh, increasing increasing high levels of personal happiness broad -based. at scale <laughs> broad-based <laughs> personal happiness at scale uh, you know encountered at scale and therefore relevant to a lot of conversations about what humans should do that it is currently not taken into consideration for. Mm. So well, let's, let's, let's yeah. uh, bookmark it there. We'll, we'll put the dot, dot, dot on it. And Thea, I wanna thank you for, for bringing us together. This is, this is really fucking exciting. And uh, I, I look forward to just to continuing with both of y'all. It feels really good. Okay, good. Enjoy, folks. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.